Hey guys, welcome back to the Struggleville YouTube channel. This is my all-encompassing, complete guide to shipping clothing on eBay. Uh, I had a subscriber ask about uh, shipping clothing, and I figured it's a good idea. It's something I should probably go over. Um, I know a lot of people have, or a few other people have done different shipping videos on uh, shipping in general. I've done some other shipping videos. Some people have done specific videos on clothing, but um, I think this is going to encompass everything you could possibly want to know about shipping the clothing. So add it to your favorites, share it, like it, love it, clutch it in bed like your favorite pillow, and uh, let's get started. So when I'm shipping clothing, the first thing, I put these in order. These are all your options, and I'm going to put them in order of least expensive, which is your best option, obviously, because we all want to save money, to what is the most expensive. So the first thing I have here um, is a poly mailer. It's 6x9, and when you're using this, you're shipping first class mail through the post office, and the maximum weight is 13 ounces, so you're going to need to have a digital scale. So this works best, it's small, it works best for t-shirts and like women's clothing because women have those little tank tops and t-shirts and small stuff. So that's when I would use this. I have a t-shirt here, I can fold up and put in it for you. This is a extra large men's shirt so it's kind of getting um, a little big for this uh, poly mailer but for the purposes of this it will work. Another thing with the poly mailers is um, so see it fits in there. Close it up. But see how it's all curled and wrinkly? It's very difficult to put a label on that. Um, whether you're taping your labels on or if you use self-adhesive labels, it's more difficult at this point. So make sure to put your labels on before the clothing item's been put in it. Now it's nice and flat, you won't get any wrinkles, you won't get any bubbles in your labels. So that's the 6x9. Um, this is a 9x12, and the weight difference, these things weigh almost nothing. So I buy these for other items, but if you're only selling clothing, you don't have to buy these. You don't need two different sizes if, if you're only doing clothing. There's no point because it's not a, really a weight savings there. So you don't have to use that one. The 9x12 basically fits anything that's going to be under 13 ounces, so it can go first class mail, is going to fit in this envelope. Um, so the same thing with the t-shirt, you can just stuff it in there, it fits a lot nicer. And there you go. Another thing when I'm shipping clothing, I know some people use packing slips, other people don't. I always use a packing slip because any legitimate store, anything you buy from online that is a legitimate store is going to give you a packing slip. It's what they do. It's professional. Um, people know who they bought it from. You know, some people buy a lot of stuff and they'll forget who they bought this from or who they bought that from. And um, it just brings legitimacy to your business and obviously that's something that you want. Also you'll notice some people you know, they'll tell you to take this t-shirt and tie a bow around it or wrap it in some tissue paper or something. If you want to do that, if, if it's worth your time to do that, go ahead. I'm not into pretty packaging. I'm into efficient packaging and getting it to the buyer fast and cheap. Um, I don't care about pretty. Uh, I sell mostly to men, so I don't think men care too much about pretty. Maybe if you're selling a lot of women's clothing, they would appreciate the prettiness more. Um, I don't worry about it. So those are your two options for first class mail. So let's say it weighs over 13 ounces. Now you're going priority mail, but with clothing you basically will never use weight based shipping. Everything's going to fit in a flat rate of some sort. So here I have the regular flat rate envelope. You can see they're like cardboard paper basically. And this is the legal size. The regular is 12 and a half by nine and a half. The legal is 15 by nine and a half, so it's a little bit bigger. Um, 
the legal is only five cents more than the regular. So I still have these, but I never use them because then it's two things I have to track, and it's only five cents difference. Um, I just I never order these anymore. I still have them because I haven't used it. So we're looking at the legal one um, right now with the holiday shipping discount, or if you're a top rated seller. Uh, rates will probably go up in January, but this is four dollars and ninety nine cents right now. So, um, a lot of people ship blue jeans in these. I don't. I use the padded, which we'll get to next, because the thing with this is it's cardboard. If it gets wet, it gets weak, and you'll get holes in it. A lot of times, creases will develop when you put an item in it, and it'll cause it to split. The seams will rip. You get holes in it. If you've ever bought something on uh, eBay, Amazon, something like that and got it in one of these, these are usually pretty beat up. So one thing I always do is put tape all around all the edges. It takes a little bit more time, but um, you're never going to get something busting through the middle of it. It's always at a seam. So I got like this button up shirt, which is actually under 13 ounces, so you would actually be shipping this in a poly mailer. But for the sake of our discussion, we're going to say it's over 13 ounces. So we just fold it up, throw it in here. You see how it's kind of bulged and it won't crease along the normal line? Push it down the best it can. And I usually fold it right at this line right there, if you can see that. So just fold it that way. Fold it over, fold it over, make a new crease for yourself, then pull the strip, slap it on there, and then put tape around all four sides. Again, it is easier to put the label on before the article of clothing is in the envelope. So that's going to be your next best option. After that, we have a padded flat rate envelope. And this one is really nice because it's like a plastic material, so you don't have to worry about it ripping or opening. Also, it can hold quite a bit of stuff. Um, this, is, this is what I use for jeans because I think it just looks a little bit nicer and I don't have to worry about it splitting open. At the moment, these are $5.35 um, with the holiday discount. I think it might be like $5.70 um, regular, but... About $5.35. I ship a lot of sweaters in there. So, I have this sweater here that's sold. Um, $17 in free shipping. So, my free shipping is a padded flat rate. And these are a little bit more difficult to stuff things in. But I also have another shipping tip video. If you, um, I'll put an annotation in this video, but it's to shrink clothing that won't fit. Like, to get hoodies into this padded flat rate, they typically won't fit on their own. You'd have to uh, shrink them down. So what I do is put them in a plastic bag, kind of like one of the small garbage bags, and hook it up to a vacuum, and it sucks the item down, makes it smaller. So I'll put the annotation up. You guys can check out that video if you're interested. Um, but same thing. Fold this over and slap your label on or slap your label on first. Um, the other thing about these is you don't have to worry about taping the seams. But I always tape the flap just to reinforce it just in case. Especially if you've really packed this thing full. Um, sometimes these look real round and real stuffed and post offices will give you a hard time about it. But... Uh, anything that fits, anything where this can still steal on its own, you can ship it at the flat rate price. Don't let them talk you out of it. Um, you are allowed to tape it. You're allowed to reinforce the seams as long as it can close on its own without that tape. So do not uh, fold under pressure and let them push you around. Now sometimes your last option, this is a regional A box. And I have a, a video on how to use these boxes in general. So I'll put an annotation for that too. I don't, I'm not going to go over it again. But sometimes, depending how far away 
your buyer is, this box can be cheaper than this envelope. So in those instances, when I see a buyer is like a zone one, two, or three from me, I'm in Illinois, so we're talking anywhere in the Midwest, when I'm going to print my shipping label, the default I'll have, let's say, is this padded flat rate. But I see that they're in a location close to me, so I will just check and see how much the regional A would cost to ship. Let's say I'm shipping this to Chicago, which is a zone two to me. This would cost $4.80 compared to the $5.35 for the padded flat rate, so I can save myself an extra 50 cents, plus the buyer gets their item in a box instead of an envelope. So it looks nicer. Um, also, I use this for jackets because even at a region eight or a zone eight, I think the highest it gets is about eight dollars. So I usually charge shipping. If I know I'm going to be using the regional A box, I charge the buyer calculated shipping um, that they pay. And everything else I do free shipping on clothing. But um, jackets, suit jackets, which was the specific question of the subscriber, I use the regional A box. And so you just fold it up. I noticed these new ones I got, the cardboard is so weak, it doesn't even fold at the seams that it's supposed to. So be careful putting breakable stuff in these boxes. But, um, I don't know where I was going with that. Just want to push these seams down after you pull the strip. I always still throw a piece of tape on there because I do not trust them. Do not trust the boxes. And all the priority mail supplies can be received for free from the post office website. Go to USPS.com. There's a link somewhere on there that says get supplies. I don't want to close that side yet. I should have been paying attention to what I was doing. Let's keep that folded back. So we're going to put a suit jacket in here. Fold it up, drop it in, and there it is. So seal it up, and I might as well seal it since I already pulled the strip. But so there you go. Doesn't move around too much. It's a pretty good fit. Looks a lot nicer than the envelope. And then you can slap your label on there. And remember, you have to use. The regional postage, uh, regional rate postage with these boxes, you can't put a regular label on a regional rate box. You wouldn't want to anyways because it would cost you more money. So, uh, I think I covered everything about shipping clothing. Hopefully this helps you guys out. Like I said, make sure to like the video. Subscribe if you're not already subscribers. Lots of other shipping videos and eBay videos and uh, buying and selling videos. So, Thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, send me a message. I'll do my best to uh, answer them as quickly as possible. Thanks, guys.